Now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> President Putin. You can beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Yeah, I anyway. understand. Yeah, that's just President, I'm better. You are a hell of a lot better. <laughs> Minutes ago. You know, folks, it's very important now more than ever that you think for yourselves, that you use your own noggin, your own common sense, your own experience to sort through all of this. There are a lot of agendas flying around here, none of which are for the country. In about 20, 25 minutes Eastern time, 6.30 p.m., Joe Biden will have a press conference. We will take it live. And we're being told by the media, good, bad, and indifferent, that this is make or break. Now, first of all, he's not going to all of a sudden be Albert Einstein. But what do they mean this is make or break? So if he has a decent press conference, he no longer has dementia? What, what does this mean? Or if he has a bad press conference, that just underscores that he has dementia? And the press, of course, are going to use this as an opportunity, I predict, because it'll happen, to try and recover from the destruction they've done to themselves. You see, the only people who have a worse poll rating than Biden would be Kamala Harris and the American media. The American people detest the American media because the American media is like Pravda. It's like Al Jazeera. To watch Jake Tapper... To watch the conga line of miscreants and malcontents, the reprobates in the media, the Democrat operatives and the ideologues, all of a sudden, feign anger that they were lied to, is really quite an act. The media, as it turns out, are filled with drama queens. They were colluders. They were conspirators. In 2000, when Biden was hiding out in his basement, campaigning from his basement, all the way through the minute before the debate. They are responsible for the predicament the Democrat Party is in today. Not America, the Democrat Party. Now, America is in a predicament to the extent that our enemies see that we have a president who has dementia. And so this is provocative. And I worry about the next half year if this man remains in office. But to show you how unserious the America Pravda, the America Al Jazeera are, to show you how unserious the Hollywood clown show headed by George Clooney and his ilk, to show you how unserious the devious, diabolical, evil, America-hating Democrat Party is, none of them are calling for the 25th Amendment to remove Joe Biden immediately. Because their interests, as I've been saying day in and day out, are for the Democrat Party, not America. The Democrat Party, in their view, has to reshape America, has to rejigger America, has to turn America inside out. Only then is America worthwhile. Only then should there be allegiance to America. When a monopoly party, a Democrat party, takes over, only then is the country worth defending. The New York Slimes... It's quite a remarkable institution, what they've gotten away with, is a corporation. 
It is a corporation that has a board of directors. It is a corporation that has executives. It is a corporation that has employees. And rather than making widgets, it produces barely newspapers. It is a bankrupt enterprise that was saved by a billionaire, among others, from Mexico. Just as the Washington Post is a bankrupt enterprise saved by a billionaire who found an Amazon, Bezos. It cannot survive on its own as a news operation. But the New York Times has put out two editorials demanding that Joe Biden drop out of the race. Not that he drop out of the presidency. No, 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 no. That he drop out of the race. We all saw what happened at the debate. He can't win. The problem is he can't govern. We have a Politburo, a cabal that's governing. That is abundantly clear. But no, 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 we can't do that. We like his policies. We like the Politburo and the cabal, whoever they are. They're doing a hell of a job for the American Marxist movement, the Marxists and the Islamists. It's the most radical president in American history. Whether he knows it or not, that's good. But we're afraid he can't win. So now the New York Slimes realizing that they have to do more than beat down Joe Biden has an enormously long editorial. One, just hold on, two, three, four, five. Six printed pages, size 10 font. Donald Trump is unfit to lead by the editorial board. The editorial board, what is this editorial board? It's a gaggle of about a dozen, maybe 18, you could look it up on Google, radical left-wing kooks who get together and they write their editorials, extremists. America-hating, Marxist-Islamist revolutionary. And so when they say the New York Times has said, you're talking about a dozen to maybe a score of individuals. They said it. That's all. What is the New York Times has said? The New York Times is a newspaper or a website doesn't say anything, can't speak, can't hear, doesn't have a brain. And I notice when they hide behind the editorial board, they don't list as they should in every instance the members of the editorial board and their backgrounds. Again, you can Google it. They're all radical kooks. And the names of the individuals who've written this particular editorial, because all score of them haven't written the editorial. It's a couple of them. And it is a vicious, vile hit job from a newspaper that promoted Stalin, Hitler, and Castro. Telling us that Donald Trump is unfit to lead. A newspaper that has promoted Joe Biden. All these years, lying to the readership. All these years. Now pretending that they're righteous. They've never been righteous. They can't be righteous. It is a corrupt corporation. Through and through. From one century to the next. They write here, the editorial board is a group of opinion journalists. Well, what is an opinion journalist, Mr. Producer? There is no such thing as an opinion journalist in the profession. Unfortunately, there is no profession, so they're all opinion journalists. What does that mean? That means their opinion, their advocacy, their ideology is the news. So they confess to it right here. A group of opinion journalists whose views are informed by experience, research, debate, and certain long-standing values. It is separate from the newsroom. They're opinion journalists. How can they be separate from the newsroom that's filled with journalists? So they don't even know how to write. They're basically illiterate. And they're moronic. 
And so they attack Donald Trump, who next week will be nominated as the Republican nominee for President of the United States. And I'm not going to bother reading this to you. Why should I? They've written more about Donald Trump in this editorial, listen to me, than they did about the Holocaust since the 1930s to 1945. They spent more words, more ink, attacking Donald Trump in this one editorial today than they did in a decade of Nazi control over Germany and the extermination of the European Jews. They've spent more time in this editorial, words and ink, trashing Donald Trump than they did Joseph Stalin in 1932 when he was slaughtering the Ukrainians. They've spent more words and ink in this editorial trashing Donald Trump than they've ever spent trashing Fidel Castro. And yet, they claim a self-serving mantle to dictate our politics, to dictate our governance, to tell us who should be the nominee of which party, who should not be the nominee of which party. Because truth be told, this isn't a true American First Amendment media organization. This is a Marxist, thuggish, fascist-like propaganda operation. And that's why the editorial board members hide behind the phrase, the editorial board. 